There are a lot of assumptions that many sighted people make about blind people. And I think that a lot of them come to us from our cultural representations, from films and from novels that importantly have not been created by blind and visually impaired people themselves. My name is Leona Godin, and I wrote Their Plant Eyes, a personal and cultural history of blindness. I would love to share with you some of the most common misconceptions that many sighted people have about blind people. So one of the things that my blind friends and I have found to be quite distressing is how often blind character will ask to touch somebody's face. Face touching is not something that any blind person I know does on a regular basis, especially not with people that they don't know. So in other words, the only time that most blind people touch faces is like in intimate moments, you know, with their loved ones or when you're making out with somebody, then you might do some face touching. Lionel Richie is singing and is in love with the, uh, the blind woman who is at the same time sculpting a bust of none other than Lionel Richie. Oh, it's wonderful. This is how I see you. <laughs> I remember that from the 80s and I was, you know, still a sighted person at that point. And even then I thought that was a little egregious. As a general rule, we don't face touch to get any kind of map of somebody's face, but just to tell them that we love them or that we like them a lot. And that kind of leads me into the next maybe ocular centric assumption that people might have that, um, oh, I don't know, that blind people are somehow more virginal than other people, you know, that maybe we don't like sex. And so it's pretty important for me to let people know that blind people also enjoy sex and that if we are really honest about it, you know, we feel kind of oppressed by that that urge that a lot of side people have to kind of make us saintly or more spiritual than your average person. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, blind people do not necessarily have superpowers. That urge to have a superpowered blind person is kind of fun and interesting, but I think it takes away from the possibility of just being a normal blind person. And I think even just saying the phrase, right, normal blind person would strike a lot of people as, I don't know, strange or, or an oxymoron. Another big problem in the movies is that there's a thing called blind face, right, where you hire sighted actors to play blind people, and then they have this blank stare you know, this thousand mile blank stare. When I'm speaking with people in person, I'm gonna make an effort to, you know, look in the direction of where the voice is coming from. It's kind of an obvious thing. The voice comes out of a head. You can kind of gauge in general, like where the eyes would be. I think a lot of sighted people think that we're really sad, you know, that blind people are living in kind of a, a sad, dark world. For example, the other day I was walking home from a bar with my with my partner and these kids on skateboards passed by and one of them says, are you blind? That's so sad. And I said, well, why? I'm, you know, big smile. I'm fine, you know, feeling kind of buzzed. I, I was doing great. And and I said, there's nothing to be sad about. And he, he's like, that's that, that's really sad. I, I'm sorry, you know, and then and then we kind of go our separate ways. And it struck me as so, so strange. You know, why would he think that this is sad? We have lots of mood swings, just like other humans. And sometimes we're sad and sometimes we're happy. And, you know, blindness doesn't have a ton to do with that. The most pervasive tropes regarding blindness, I think in our modern era, we might call that like the Fonzie going blind trope or something. I'm blind. Or in this day and age, maybe the Arya Stark in the Game of Thrones series, but also the books, Song of Ice and Fire. And that is blindness as kind of moral corrective. This idea that you're going about things in the wrong way or you're a bad person somehow. And so you suddenly get struck blind and... Oh, 
the angels sing and you see the light, right? In a metaphorical sense, suddenly you see the truth or you have some sort of understanding that you didn't have with functioning eyes. Well, I would love for this to be true, right? I would love for all of us who are blind or visually impaired to be like morally upright citizens and that we all sort of see the eternal truths and think correctly. But I'm afraid that it's just not the case. That's her guy. Wait, is he blind? We messed up to rob a blind guy, isn't it? Just because he's blind don't mean he's insane, bro. I think that sighted people tend to have kind of an all or nothing attitude towards blindness. I personally have kind of lived on every notch of the sight blindness continuum. I started out life seeing normally according to the eye charts. And then when I was in fourth grade, I suddenly couldn't really see the writing on the blackboard. I was diagnosed with a progressive degenerative disease. For many, many years, I was somewhere on that spectrum between being fully sighted and being totally blind where I am now. Although I must say that I still have just the tiniest bit of light perception and the far left peripheral vision. But for the most part, I'm a totally blind person. But most people that you will see walking down the street with a cane or a guide dog have some vision. One big takeaway from all of this might be that there's as many ways of being blind as there are of being sighted, and that there's so much variety. Blindness is not a monolith. But I am asking people to think about how much of our world is centered upon vision to such an extent that other senses are downplayed and that people who don't have vision are then discriminated against. That's really what I'm trying to fight, is that there are other ways of being in the world other than visual. And ocular centrism is kind of the extreme version of thinking that somebody's a lesser being because they can't see.